hold music. You want to avoid it, and so do your customers. So say goodbye to hold music and hello to faster, smarter support with Salesforce. Make service more personal and agents more productive using built-in trusted AI. Then watch costs and wait times drop and satisfaction soar. Support customers in a whole new way with Service GPT. Learn how at salesforce.com slash service GPT. If you've been feeling overwhelmed with anxiety lately, try listening to a guided meditation on the Meditation for Anxiety podcast. Meditation is a proven natural way to help you calm down and dissolve stress so you can feel lighter and happier. So subscribe for free today to the Meditation for Anxiety podcast by searching for Meditation for Anxiety on your favorite podcast player. This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 2525, Five Ways to Organize Your Life and Save Money, part one, by Emily Guy Birkin with ptmoney.com. And I'm your host and personal finance enthusiast, Diana Merriam. Now today I have a longer post for you, so I'm going to split the article up, reading the first part today and finishing it up tomorrow. So with that, let's get right to part one and start optimizing your life. Five Ways to Organize Your Life and Save Money, Part 1, by Emily Guy Birkin with ptmoney.com. I hate to admit it, but I'm organizationally challenged. My home is littered with doubles of items I've bought when I could not find the original. My living room often looks like who did it and ran, which is only partially the fault of the resident rugrats. I've even been known to misplace checks for months at a time in the pile of stuff on my desk. After years of failed resolutions, I've come to realize that organization is a habit and that there is no particular product I can buy that will make me organized, much as I love shopping at the container store. Ready to learn how to organize your life and save? Here are five ways that organization will help you save money and some suggestions for how to go about changing your habits to make organization possible. Number one, meal planning keeps you from wasting food. How many times have you excavated some moldy food item out of your refrigerator that you never even tasted before it turned to the dark side? Not only do I sometimes find myself throwing out fruits or vegetables that never saw a plate, I also have a tendency to throw out delicately aged leftovers that I carefully put in Tupperware only to lose it in the back of the fridge until it has become a science experiment. The solution to the food wasting problem is meal planning. Planning out your meals in advance, or even just your dinners, forces you to think about what ingredients you have at home, allows you to only shop for the ingredients you need rather than going on a grocery binge, and makes you plan out your week with the difficult days in mind. If you're new to meal planning, using a service that provides you with menus, recipes, and grocery lists, is a pain-free way to start. The savingdinner.com program, for example, offers menus catering to both dietary and financial restrictions. Even if you go it alone, the main thing to do is to get into the habit of planning out your meals in advance. Sit down on Sunday with your calendar and some cookbooks and figure out what dinner you will make each night of the coming week. Then go shopping in your own pantry to find out what you already have, and make a list of what you need before you go shopping. Post your dinner list somewhere you'll see it, so you remember to defrost the necessary ingredients ahead of time. You'll find that you not only spend less at the grocery store, less of your food will end up in the trash. Number two, keeping an organized calendar will save money on everything from gifts to maintenance to food. Most parents have had at least one panicked Toys R Us run on the way to a child's birthday party and grumbled at the cost of the gift, plus the gift bag you have to buy at a high markup so your kid won't be the only one giving an unwrapped present. But giving presents doesn't have to be expensive or last minute, as long as you have a well-organized calendar at home. Placing upcoming events on the calendar allows you to plan ahead for the gift-giving occasions and actually shop around or find items that are less expensive online. Knowing that you'll need a gift in the near future 
also makes it possible to wrap the present at home rather than waste money on a gift bag that is immediately going in the trash anyway. Maintaining a home calendar can also save you money elsewhere. For instance, regular maintenance is important for both home and automobile, but it can be difficult to remember to clean out your gutters and get your oil changed when you have a busy schedule and a family. Taking the time to pencil in all of the regular home and car maintenance duties on your calendar will ensure that you schedule them and prevent serious problems from cropping up. Finally, the meal plan you set up will be much more useful if you create it with your calendar in hand. Not only will that prevent you from buying ingredients for dinner on a day you're scheduled to meet friends at a restaurant, but it also helps you remember which day's schedules can and cannot handle elaborate recipes. It's much cheaper to plan on simple spaghetti for the night of little sis's piano recital rather than realize you have to order pizza because the duck a la orange you planned will take too much time. It doesn't matter if your family calendar is a traditional wall calendar, a digital timekeeper, or a paper agenda. All that matters is that all events are posted in the same place and that everyone in the family has access to it. Number three. Hear that on tomorrow's episode. You just listened to part one of the post titled Five Ways to Organize Your Life and Save Money by Emily Guy Birkin with ptmoney.com. We talk about finances here on the show every day, but there's always more to learn. And lately, I'm proud to say that my own knowledge of economics has reached a new level thanks to our sponsor, Masterclass. Masterclass is an app and streaming platform that makes a meaningful gift this season because you can help a loved one learn a new skill from the world's best performers. It's like Masterclass instructors are your own personal mentors, providing content and videos that are going to help you reach the next level. For just $10 a month, there are 11 categories and over 180 Masterclasses to pick from, with new classes added every month, like Paul Krugman's class, which helped me gain a better understanding of global economics, something that has absolutely influenced my personal finance decisions. This holiday season, give one annual membership and get one free at masterclass.com slash optimal finance. Right now, you can get two memberships for the price of one at masterclass.com slash optimal finance. Masterclass.com slash optimal finance. Offer terms apply labor strikes, climate change, your beat up office printer. What do they all have in common? Come on, it's about the money. Economics is everywhere and everything fueling our lives, even where we least expect it. If you're a fan of Optimal Finance Daily and are curious to learn something new and exciting about economics every week, I recommend you listen to the Planet Money podcast from NPR. Planet Money is a different kind of world, where the complex economy actually makes sense. Listeners can learn, laugh, and be entertained. And in addition, I find it to be really educational. Money can be confusing, and Planet Money is great at providing straightforward explanations for how money is really moving in ways we're usually kept in the dark about. The Planet Money team lives to tell a good story in around 30 minutes. It's econ for the rest of us. Tune in to Planet Money every week for entertaining stories and insights about how money shapes our world, stories that can't be found anywhere else. Listen now to Planet Money from NPR, wherever you get your podcasts. I've always loved getting organized, but I also have a tendency to abandon systems and let things get messy. Perhaps subconsciously, I do this to experience the joy of cleaning it up. So for example, I do credit card churning, where I open credit cards to get the sign-up bonus points. The key to doing this well is to keep track of all the cards and either close them or downgrade them before the annual fee is charged. But you also have to monitor them for fraud if you keep them open. I recently realized that I was doing a bad job at tracking all of this. I had one spreadsheet of cards, but it didn't include the ones that my Midwestern gentleman opened. I had another spreadsheet I was using to compare the different point options so that when I was deciding how to use the points, I was choosing the most beneficial option. I had business cards and personal cards, and some were connected to airline and hotel programs while others weren't. Frankly, it was kind of a mess. 
I spent hours last week cleaning it all up and closing down cards. Now I think I have a more comprehensive system, but I'm mindful of the time and money this has cost me. So far, the benefits still outweigh the costs, but this experience has shown me how vitally important it is to stay organized. But we're just halfway through the article, so I'll stop here for now. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you tomorrow where we'll finish up this post and where your optimal life awaits.